My God, it's full of stars. All right, we are going to do a, um, as best I can, a summary of, of the language um, as I know it on March 17th, 2018. I mean, every week, it expa you know, it's, it's expanding into other movies and other directors and everything. So I want to kind of get, an, get a, a summary of what I found in Kubrick's puzzle and how what I found fits together and um, that's I'm trying to simplify this I have I have uh, this somebody I spoke to today and they said they they had watched a couple of the videos and they they tried and tried and you did, they just don't understand how it fits together they don't under, you know they, they understood like parts of it but um, it didn't make any sense to them so in response to that, Patty, I did this video. I'm going to do this video here. And we're going to look at the different... Th now, um, the main thing in this puzzle are the threads. So what Kubrick has done is he's hidden all these vehicles in the puzzle. And he's hidden all things that are slices in the puzzle. And the kings and the queens and the you know I didn't put I'm not I'm not putting every specific one in here but the kings the queens the jacks so this would be card games. He gives you Ed Bishop in 2001. So this is the chess clues. He gives you the barrel of monkeys and the barrel clues. So there's a whole list of barrels. And so you'll notice as you go down here, you have this is a card. This could be cards or chess, cards or chess, cards, chess. Um, this is another game. Now it's not a chess game, but it's a child's game. Barrel of monkeys, and barrels is a category. We have barrels of whiskey, barrels on the rifle, um, bar you know fisheye barrel distortion, um, barrels of beer, barrels of um, oil. And then this bizarre. Let me let, actually let me cut these two out right here because I have them listed below. Then we have a category of boxing. So this will. Okay, let's let's do one thing right now before we even go any further. The category of jacks. If you knew nothing of this puzzle, and I told you to just sit down at a desk and to write down the most Jungian famous stars and celebrities and explorers and the thinking specifically when you do this of the 12 Jungian archetypes. So you're going to have the sage in there, you're going to have the explorer in there, you're going to have the uh, the sports hero in there, you know, all the different archetypes that you could have. And the only thing that they have to have in common is they have the word Jack in them. And you're going to, you know, you can do this a million times and you're going to end up with Jack Nicholson Jack Nicholas, the golfer. Uh, Jack that you would jack your car up on. 
and then of course this extends into Kubrick's movie so when you once you find this Jax category you want to look at all Kubrick's movies so you look at Kubrick's one, one of the movies he worked on was one-eyed Jax so that gives you your one-eyed category so here's how you get your first clue at the one-eyed category and we're not even you know we're only a few into Jack and then of course you've got Johnny Carson you know um, Jack st sticks his head through the door and says here's Johnny so he's giving you Johnny Carson and of course Johnny Carson is king of late night so this is kind of how you go wow that's weird that's another card clue you know he's the king of late night so once you realize that Jax is a category it takes a little time but you can figure out who the famous Jax are and then you start thinking about Jax and then you come down here and you go oh boxing is in the category too hmm so then you come up with Jack Johnson um, and this is how you build the entire category of Jax and there's a picture in it's in numerous videos that I've done it's a fantastic picture done by Billy McNeil and it's called all things Jack Nicholson and in that picture is um, a summary of all the Jacks you know you have Jack Sparrows and uh, which is Johnny Depp of course Johnny Depp you have uh, Black ja uh, Jack Black from Mars Attacks and uh, School of Rock you know there's another rock clue and this is how you do it so you fill it off for the Jacks and then you, when you go to Queens, you do the same thing. You know, you have uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Queen of uh, Scream Queen. And he gives you John Wayne. And John Wayne is, uh, no, he's a king. He's king of the, king of the Westerns. Uh, he gives you, um, oh, what the hell is it? Not the Lone Ranger. He gives you Roy Rogers. And this would be King of the King of the Cowboys. So this is how it goes. You you find these categories, the kings, the queens, the slices, the vehicles. Each one of these things is a thread. Okay. And so you know, this you don't solve this puzzle in five minutes. You do this stuff, you you know, you find Ed Bishop and you go, Wow, that's interesting. And then you find out that Mick Jagger is Sir Mick Jagger. And Mick Jagger is in the puzzle, and you find um, Sir Alec Guinness. You know he's a knight, and uh, he's he's born on you know World Autism Day. And then you have um, who's another one? You know you have Sir Paul McCartney. Sir, well let me change that. It's Sir Paul McCartney. And uh, Sir, um, oh God, I'm forgetting them now. Oh, Sir Arthur C. Clarke. See, so Sir Arthur C. Clarke. When you go to the Apollo landing maps, they have the Camelot. Camelot Crater, you know. <laughs> so, Camelot Crater, Arthur C. Clarke, he is King Arthur. Um, so, you find all the barrels, you find all the boxing, you, the weapons. So, the weapon begins with the Bone Club and it ends with the ICBM missiles that, it, that you know, in the category you have. And, and by the way, uh, let me close, let me go over this one ICBM. So you could redo, you know, this is Kubrickian humor. BM, bowel, I see BM, bowel movement. So this is a clue into the whole nuclear weapons lie, I see BM. And so you have the Bone Club is the simplest, and then it progresses to, um, you know, you have the slices and the cuts and the chopper and, you know, the, the Yankee Clipper. So he gives you all the cutting implements. So you're going to have the buck knife. Oops. The Bowie knife. The, um, you know, Allen Shepherd's six iron slice. 
So these will be all the, the weapons that you have. And it finishes, you know, there's the, the M16 uh, Bushmaster is in there. And the M14 Garand rifle is in there. And all the different weapons that are going to be in here. And, uh, you know, you have the jackhammer. Um, and, well, here's another category I didn't put in here. You're going to have carpentry tools. And this follows right into John Carpenter's movie. So we have Scott Carpenter Apollo. We have, um, you know, John Carpenter. And then we have the, the you know, the buzz saw and the jump cut, you know. And um, the level, you know. So these are clues to Flat Earth again. The level and the plum, you know. That we get the plumb bob from Jack Spratt. You know, he sticks his thumb in the pie and he pulls out the plum. So you get the plumb bob, and then you. Uh, so this one is so clever. I love this one. You have James Irwin, okay, and Stanley Kubrick. So if you've done any kind of construction work, and I've done a shitload of construction work, those two names immediately, if I, if I, with no context at all, if I just write down Stanley and Irwin, with no context at all, and just write those two words down and tell you to come up, what am I talking about? You're going to say, oh, the tape measure, or the, uh, or the saw, or the ruler, or the level. I mean, this, these are the companies that make levels and rulers and Stanley and Irwin are huge multi-million dollar companies and they're both famous for making tape measures and um, so you know he gives you James Irwin and of course there's, there's a whole category of Stanley and it you know it begins with the Stanley Hotel this is Steve the hotel Stephen King stays at and the Stanley steamer this is the car we know remember once again we got to remember there's always a vehicle where there's always a vehicle so one of the vehicles is the Stanley steamer. And this is how you do it. You're weaving these things together. When you run into another vehicle, like when you get to the 1964 World's Fair, you go, oh, that's where the Mustang was. Uh, and the Falcon, the first unibody cars. And then you go, oh, well, the, the Mustang is a horse and the Falcon is a bird. And we have a category of, of birds and, and, and horses down here. <clears throat> so this is how you do it. And... A lot of these things are tied together with famous historical allegories. And Kubrick loves Greek tragedies. And, you know, so he's giving you, in the movie The Shining, all the clues to Theseus and the magic thread. You know, he, he tells us in interviews that Danny represents Theseus and Jack represents the Minotaur. And we're, you know, Danny is walking backwards in his footsteps, just like Theseus walked backwards, or walked out of the maze following the magic thread. He tells us this in the so you want to, you don't have to figure this part out. He's giving you this part on a, on a golden platter. Here it is, Theseus and the magic, magic thread. And of course, he gives you 2001: A Space Odyssey. So we're, we're giving Greek odysseys and Theseus and the magic thread. So when we watch. Um, 2001 A Space Odyssey, you know, it's Dave Bowman. So he's giving you David and Goliath. David would be Kubrick, Goliath would be NASA. And this is mirrored, this is even mirrored in the movie Coneheads when Beldar um, defeats the Garthok with his golf club and, and a stone. He fires the, the stone and it kills the Garthok. <clears throat> so this is mirrored in other movies, this David and Goliath theme. And uh, once again, it's a giant leap. So Goliath was a giant, he was one of the giants, by the way. And then we have um, the Trojan horse. Kubrick does interviews, and he tells us, <clears throat> the, or uh, he tells us um, that the hardest, the hardest part is getting out of the vehicle, over and over. So the Trojan horse is a very bizarre vehicle because you don't actually propel the vehicle yourself. You leave the vehicle outside the fort, and then the proles go out and roll the thing into the fort. 
but even after you, you know, so you don't have to make the, the journey into the fort yourself. That's done for you. But once you're in the fort in your Trojan horse, the hardest part is getting out of the horse. So Kubrick's built this massive um, puzzle. And in a sense, it's a, it's a Trojan horse. And he gives us also, it's a jack-in-the-box. You know, once it pops out, you can't stop it. It's, um, it's a snowball. It's rolling downhill. So it's a, here's another one here too. I'll put up a bunch of these because he does repeat, oop, didn't want to do that. He repeats this theme of um, once it pops out, sorry, but you can't stop it. So it's a snowball. It's the Mount, um, Mount Hood volcano. You know, it's, it could blow at any, at any time, you know, God knows when it's going to go. And of course, they tell you they're always inactive. You know, it's inactive. So, inactive. Does that mean it's never going to blow again, or is it going to blow tomorrow? We don't know. And this is why Kubrick. I think one of the big reasons Kubrick selects the Mount Hood Timberline Lodge because he wants to get that impending explosion disaster. And of course, Mount Hood is a ski lodge, so you know you have the snowball going down the, the inactive volcano that may explode at any moment. And then the theme of fire. You know, Danny wants to play with his fire truck, and you have the book, the Overlook Burns Down, and you have the Burns Twins, and Jack has the chrome-plated Michael Collins fire axe, and yada, yada, yada. So he's using these Greek historical allegories. Now, the, the clues that of, of to which Greek allegories he's using, sometimes they're very blatant, and Theseus and the Magic Thread he hits you over the head with a jackhammer with this. You know, he talks about it in interviews, and it's obvious when he watched the movie. There's a, a labyrinth, and Danny's running through the labyrinth. Um, the David and Goliath thing, that, not, that's a little more subtle. Um, the, uh, the Cyclops is also quite subtle. The Cyclops is communicated through all the reflective images of 2001, where you see Dave Bowman standing in front of Hal's cy uh, cycloptic um, fisheye lens and we see the reflection of Dave in the lens and we see it look, makes it look like he has horns so it's half man and it's half uh, minotaur it's half bull half man and the cyclops were given in the exact same image we're given both Theseus and the magic thread and the cyclops because the cyclops has one eye just like Hal so once again we're in a Greek myth and it's the Cyclops well wait a second we have a category of one-eyed you know right from here right from the Jack, the Jacks category we have a Kubrick movie called one-eyed Jack so you go oh uh, we got the Greek you know allegorical puzzle he's pointing to about a one-eyed one-horned uh, Cyclops and and you know so that's this is how the historic allegories work um, you're given very esoteric clues to what they are, but once you find them, it's overwhelming the amount of stuff that's been hidden to reaffirm that you got the right allegorical puzzle. You know, I mean, he gives you the maze and he does the interview. So, uh, you know, then then we're given children's um, stories. So we have the writers would, in this case, would be the Grimm brothers, or the brothers Grimm, I should say. Uh, so the Brothers Grimm, and there's more than Hansel and, Hansel and Gretel. Um, I can't think of the other one right now. Yeah, you had the Three Little Pigs. A lot of these stories, um, in the Three Little Pigs story, you have straw, you have wood, and you have stone. Those are the three types of houses, right? So you have Catcher in the Rye Grass which would be dried out to make straw. You have um, Dorian Harewood. And you have Philip Stone. So he's giving you these little silly stories, you know, that don't seem to be related to anything. You know, like, oh, it's just Jack being funny. But in reality, he's giving you three of the separate categories. You know, one is Catcher on the Ryegrass, the Grass Snake, the Garden of Eden, Eden. Um, the other one's Wood, so you have Elijah Wood, Natalie Wood, James Woods, Woody Allen, Woody Strode, Woodrow Wilson, 
Woody Harrelson, um, Elm Street, Pinewood Studios, you know, it goes on and on and on. There's a ton of these. So this is right here. This, the Three Little Pigs in itself, that actual story contains a triplet. These are three different threads you're going to have to figure out. And um, Looney Tunes characters, another bizarre category. And this is repeated everywhere. This is being repeated in other people's, other directors' movies. So you have Danny is uh, Doc, which is Bugs Bunny. He listens to the Roadrunner TV show. We see a, a Plymouth Roadrunner outside the, outside the Overlook. We have, um, so now, all right, let me stop right there. Because when these these he's giving you these cartoons for a reason, Bugs Bunny has two alchemical episodes. One's called Arctic Hair, and the other one's called um, Frigid Hair. No, I'm sorry. One's called Eight Ball Bunny, and one's called Frigid Hair. Both of them are about the South Pole, and there's clues into them about Admiral Byrd. And uh, so the reason he's giving you Bugs Bunny isn't just because he wants to build this puzzle with bunny hoppers and jumpers and leapers and Playboy bunnies and the Apollo astronauts do the bunny hop and the kangaroo hop. He wants to give it to you because these, these actual cartoons have flat earth uh, alchemy in them. And this is, this is seen over and over again. So he gives you Yosemite Sam. Yosemite Sam does the Christopher Columbus... Um, cartoon where he plays Christopher Columbus and the king says oh, no the earth is flat I like your head and he whacks him in the head and he makes his head flat so there's clues to the flat earth in Looney Tunes cartoons and also we're tying Looney Tunes cartoons into other people like Sylvester Stallone the uh, star in Rocky so Sylvester is a, oh geez I can't Sylvester Stallone is in Rocky and um we also have uh, Williams F Sylvester, and he plays um, Dr. Floyd. And we have uh, Pete Puma. There's a category of cats, so we needed it. We needed to have a Looney Tunes cat. So there's a Pete P Puma. And of course, we have um, the uh, Roadrunner. We did already. Um, what am I forgetting? Yeah, let's let's just let's here we'll do a search ourselves. To Road Runner or no Looney Tunes. Let's try that. So this gives you an idea of once you build these documents, like the one I have right here, you can do searches on this stuff and realize how many times it was repeated. So here we go. We have Mickey. You know, these are all the cartoon characters. It's not just Looney Tunes, by the way. So he gives you Mickey Mouse, Snoopy, and Charlie Brown capsules. Um, Sylvester Stallone, William, William Sylvester, the Roadrunner, which is in the Cuckoo family, and of course this ties into One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Yosemite Sam, um, you know, it's the Awadney Hotel, it's in the Yosemite National Park. There's a category of national parks he's using as well. And um, the Stanley Hotel is in the, um, the Rocky uh, Mountain National Park. So there's another Rocky you know, another rock clue. Playboy Penguin, he's one of the Looney Tunes characters. This is the episode where they go to the South Pole. Pete Puma, Bugs Bunny, Beaky Buzzard. So you get Buzz, now remember, you've got Buzz Cut. That's what all the guys get at the beginning of Full Metal Jacket. They all get Buzz Cuts. You get the Buzz Saw. You get the Circular Saw. You've got the um, the Buzz Bomb. This is the predecessor to the V2 Bomb. It's called the Buzz Bomb. You get buzzed on alcohol. And then to top it all off, Aldrin is a banned pesticide. So one of the categories in this puzzle is eugenics. And the reason Aldrin was banned is because it was highly toxic to people. And, you know, they were getting sick. So, you know, you've got the buzz cut, the buzz saw, the buzz bomb, um, buzz on moonshine. You know, and old buzzy Aldrin, <laughs> he's no stranger to the moonshine, I'll tell you what. He can sock him back, baby. He thinks he's going to Mars, and that's how much alcohol he's drank. And then you have in the in the in the um, the movie The Shining, Scatman says to Wendy, "Are you a Winnie or are you a Freddy?" So Winnie is Winnie the Pooh, Pooh Crater on Apollo, 
and also we see the Poo doll, the Winnie the Pooh doll. Danny has a Winnie the Pooh doll. So Pooh is the Winnie, and Freddy is the Freddy Flintstone from um, the Flint Freddy Flintstone show. So it's a stone, you know, it's a flint stone. So it fits, you know, it's a triplet. It's a cartoon, and it's a flint stone. And flint stones are used to make sparks to make a fire. And, it, of course, fires is a theme here. Scatman voices Hong Kong Fooey. There's another cartoon. He does the, the cartoon Transformers. He does the voice for jazz. Remember, Kubrick did his movie Swing Under the Nazis about swing jazz. Um, he voices Metal Arc Lemon, who's a globe trotter. So here's a globe trotter connection. And, of course, it's a connection into basketball. It's a connection into the lemon. So this is Gus Grimm's, Grissom's lemon. And it's a connection into a metal arc, which is a bird. So this is, you know, <laughs> you got to love it. you got the globe, a lemon, a metal arc, Scatman. <coughs> Scatman also is in um, the movie The Aristocats. And he does, his character's name is Scat Cat. So we have all these um, categories of cartoons. And um, so that's, you know, this is how we're doing it. Now, I'm jumping ahead and showing you the decodes for all of these. Um, you know, this, the shit category, um, there's, a, there's a video I did already called The Bodily Fluids. So that's, you know, there's the, the bird shit. <clears throat> And the bat guano, and uh, you're full of shit. No, it's it's a half, it's a 25 minutes long of all the repetition of shit. The bird, bats, all the all the animals that are in this puzzle, all their shits are mentioned. And uh, that's how we get a lot of these. The amphibian is amphibian. We're, we're amphibian shit. Um, this is we get this from uh, bat guano in um, Doctor Strangelove. Peter Sellers calls uh, Keenan Wynn, Sergeant Backwano. So then you get the snakes. You get the boa snake in Clockwork Orange. You've got Bruce Boa, the Pogue General that says, uh, you wear a peach button and you're born to kill. That, that's Bruce Boa. So he says, I will take a shit on you. So Bruce Boa becomes the snake shit category. You've got the rattlesnake. This is mentioned in Apollo. We have the Diamondback. This is mentioned in Apollo. I've made videos on these where we hear, the, hear them talking about the, the Diamondback and the Rattlesnake and the Sidewinder Rill. Um, <clears throat> so the Sidewinder Rill is, a, you know, a place on the moon. It's a, and they flew over it during Apollo 11. And then you've got the Sidewinder. You know, I've done videos. If you've watched these videos to this point, you should know all the, the, the there's freaking dozens of these things. And of course, the Alabama black snake. So the the Alabama black snake that we're talking about was is Dorian Harewood, and it is one eyed. And uh, here's another category I have not fleshed it out yet. It's very early. I know it exists. Um, there's a category of fish. So you have the active Fisher snow track. Um, you've got Carrie Fisher in Star Wars. Marlon, Marlon Brando. You got the movie Jaws. We're going to need a bigger boat. Saul Bass was <coughs> Kubrick's um, artist. You got a rainbow track. So this category here is in its infancy. If people have noticed the repeating um, pattern of fish in Kubrick's movies and, and wrote them down somewhere and you know some that I, I don't know, send them to me because I don't have all of them. And I'm, I, I'm guessing that it's going to be a very long list because every list Kubrick does is pages. And then you have the bears category. So you got the teddy bears. Teddy bears. These are clues to um, Teddy Roosevelt. He was one-eyed. Lost sight in one of his eyes in a boxing match. So he's a doublet. He's a boxer. He does the bully bully. And he's, he's blind in one eye. And he was a president. And you get the polar bear. Of course, there's no south polar bear. 
Then we have the smoky oops, colored carpet. And the overlook. And then you got Smokey the Bear. You've got Pooh Crater. Apollo. You've got Danny's Pooh. Winnie the Pooh doll. You've got um, Oh, you've got uh, Smokey Jr. So, in the puzzle, a lot of times, and I haven't focused on this, but you're you're given the senior and junior. So, in the case of Admiral Byrd, you're giving Richard Byrd and Dickie Byrd Jr. Uh, you know, and then you go to Bush, and you're given Bush Senior and Junior, and this goes on and on and on and on. In uh, Michael Collins, you're given Lightning, Joe Collins, and Michael Collins, you know, Senior and Junior. So we're always doing father and son, father and daughter, mother and daughter, mother. You know, this is how it works. It's always we're building. <clears throat> we're, we're making pairs and doublets and triplets. So when we find a Lightning Joe Collins and a Michael Collins, that's a pair. When we find a George Bush Sr. and George Bush Jr., that's a pair. When we find Dickie Bird Jr. and Dickie, or Dickie Bird and Dickie Bird Jr., that's a pair. They have the same first and last names. Um, although, obviously, my, Lightning Joe and Michael don't. But Lightning Joe is so clever because it's White Lightning Joe. You know, Lightning Joe was named Lightning Joe because he probably... You know, his family runs a whiskey distillery, for God's sake. And, then, of course, this ties into, you know, when we go to the movie um, with Tim Carey, The Killing, the horse he tells him to put money on is called Red Lightning, you know. And we go to, when we go to Jupiter, his attribute is lightning. His mighty lightning bolts. And of course, his eagle. You know, so that brings us right over to the eagle has landed. And so these, this is how these um, Greek gods and their attributes tie a lot of this together. And the biblical thread. You know, I've gone over this one before. So what we do is we go down through this category, and we we find the vehicles category, and you watch all the Kubrick's movies, and you note down all the vehicle, literally all the vehicles you see. But he usually will draw attention to the real alchemical ones he wants you to look at, like the snow cat. So there's a so there's a snow track in the movie, but it's called a snow which is this is how you spell it, there's no W in snow cat. It's called a snow cat. So this particular clue, this is a two tracked vehicle. The snow track, and this is a four track vehicle. So you know a cat has four legs, so it's a snow cat. So this is a clue to the, once again, you have to know the historical stuff behind this. So you have to know that Vivian Fuchs was the first man to do the trans-Antarctic crossing. And he does it in a custom snowcat. So the reason the snowcat is famous is because of Vivian Fuchs and his trans-Antarctic crossing. And we know that we're looking specifically for a Tucker snowcat because he rides in a very special Tucker snowcat. These are all stretched, just like um, Kennedy's limo. It was a one-of-one one handmade custom limo that was stretched, and it had the double suicide doors. So during the puzzle, as you're solving it, now and then, when you do one of these little vignettes, when you connect one of these things all together, you're going to no notice that all the interviews where Kubrick mentioned Freud and Huxley and Jung and uh, Nietzsche. Oh, I can never, I can never spell his name. Nietzsche and so he's mentioning all these um, psychologists and um, luminaries. So in Lolita. Peter Sellers does Huxley. So you, so you get Huxley there. Young, you get from, uh, it's a Jungian thing. 
and Freud you get from the when you do the date puzzles and you find out that oh Kubrick's predicting the dates of these people sometimes 10 years before they die he knows what day they're going to die and then Nietzsche you get from Thus Break Zarathustra so there's the four psychologists you're going to be using in your puzzle so when you find them young this is going to be the archetypes Um, Freud, this is the dick category because, you know, Freud was like a cigar is never just a cigar and Huxley, you know, Huxley did The Brave New World World, you know, st starring Kier D'Elia, so um, so this gives you kind of like a framework on what you're looking for and how you're going to, so when you find the Jungian archetypes, that's a huge clue because you're going to, you're going to be looking for the 12 Jungian archetypes. So you have the 12 Jungian archetypes, you have 12 zodiac signs, you have 12 um, Titans in the Battle of the Titans. So the 12, 12, 12 is being repeated and uh, they're being mirrored. So we're, we're to be looking at when I showed you these, where are they now? So we have Jupiter, a Greek god. So he would be a Jungian, you know, he would be a Jungian archetype. He would be the god. Um, and that's how the puzzle is done. When you find Woody Strode, Woody Strode is going to be the hero, the, the sports star. When you find the Beatles, they're going to be, you know, the, the, the superstar music performers. And, of course, you have the Dickie Bird and Dickie Bird Jr., and these would be in the Jungian archetype category of the Explorer. So that's how the puzzle is done. Um, we have all these birds and cats and animals and insects, and these insects and birds and cows and all this stuff, they're being used to tell you that you're looking for poisonous, cold-blooded crawlers, which would be the, the, um, the snakes. And we have the hornet that stings and uh, the stinger missile and... That's another category I didn't put on here. Missiles. So missiles, you have the Cruise missile, you know, Tom Cruise. You have the Maverick. He plays Maverick and Top Gun. You have the Stinger from the Hornet. You have the Sidewinder. You have the, uh, what is the one that the um, Minuteman. So this, the, the Minuteman comes from the movie Dr. Strangelove. And uh, Jack the Ripper says, Mandrake, get over here. The Redcoats are coming. So in Kubrick's puzzle, we're always, always using mirroring. So the mirror of Redcoats would be the Minuteman. Um, we've got, uh, what's another one? Oh, the Harpoon. So this is the, the syringe clue. Um, Actually, let me oh, here, let's do this. We'll look them right up in the document. I don't have to sit here typing them like an idiot. So the mistletoe, yeah, that's another. That's a, that's the when you, once you find the 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 Christmas category, you find the mistletoe. So here we have the toe missile and the mistletoe, the sidewinder, the maverick, the stinger, the Polaris, the Atlas. The Minuteman. Oh, I don't even have it in here. The Minuteman, the Titan, the Cruise, the Buzz Bomb, the V2. You know, because that's the V2. The Buzz Bomb was a V1, a V2. Um, let's see if there's any more. So Sharon Tate gets her first modeling job as a young starlet, um, and she poses in a bathing suit, sitting on a saddle on top of a uh, hawk missile. So there's overlap in these categories. So the, the Sharon Tate Manson killings, you know, we got the hawk missile. And she's Sharon Willett Tate. So Willett is a very famous whiskey. This is how the puzzle works. All these things have little tiny magic threads in them to connect, the, connect them together. And um, let's go back up. So I know this doesn't really, you know, it's not like you can, you can sit down and now you can get out your decoder ring and do the puzzle, but it does give you an idea of how it really works and how we're using this, these historic allegories and we're using these bizarre categories. And they're, they're not random categories. They're being selected very, you know, some of them are very broad, like the, the category of cats that can be broadly interpreted. Um, 
But other categories like balls, there's only so many different kinds of balls you're going to have. You're going to have the tennis, the ping pong, the baseball, the golf, the basketball, the billiards, the eight ball, the blue marble, the jade rabbit, the blue balls, crabs. So Kubrick gives you all these balls in the puzzle. So once you make a list of these, you're like, oh, the blue marble, hmm, that's interesting, and the jade rabbit, which is the moon. Um, there is a threat of unmade movies. So when you want to jump out of a Kubrick movie, right, and you see, see you next Wednesday, there's your jump off. That's your little magic thread. See you next Wednesday. So when we go to the Blues Brothers, we see the see you next Wednesday poster. Or Rob, see you next Wednesday. Bill Billboard. It's a board. So you get headboard, billboard. Um, and of course, you see it in American Werewolf in London. So this, this little see you next Wednesday, which originates from 2001 A Space Odyssey, when Frank Poole's father says, see you next Wednesday is carried into other movies. So if you want to know if the movie has Kubrickian alchemy, and if you see this mirrored somewhere in a poster or it's said or whatever, it's a little clue that's a magic thread. And then you have the magic threads themselves. This is the glue that holds the whole thing together. So let's do a search on magic. And we can't go, I mean, this, this document, it's, I think it's almost 300 megabit of text now. So we can't search the whole thing, but we can get an idea of the magic threads. Uh, Theseus in the Magic Thread. Um, we have uh, Cinderella in Dumb and Dumber is the Magic Slipper. Uh, the Magic Carpet. Jack and the Beanstalk and the Magic Beans. Um, Theseus in the Magic Thread. Um, the Magic Show in Full Metal Jacket. And he's at 0930. There'll be a, it's on Christmas, by the way. I know 0930 on Christmas is going to be a Magic Show. And this is where we get the Chaplin Charlie will be uh, doing a service in, in, the, in the church on Christmas. And so we mirror Chaplin Charlie to Charlie Chaplin and his ball. His, he's a baller. He had the video where he, he bounces the earth ball up and he's dressed like Hitler. And um, let's do more magic threads. Let's keep going. The Magic Bus, the 21 Window VW Magic Bus, the Magic Bake Oven, Jack and the Magic Beanstalk Means, the Magic Hitori Hanso Sword, um, you know, Jack, he steals the Magic Hen and the Magic Golden Harp. And of course, you have the magical things in, in Kubrick's puzzle. Like we have the, the tiger game that's seen in Danny's room that is swapped out for a nearly identical tiger game, but it's significantly different enough you could tell it's two different tiger games. So if you're filming a movie and things in the, in the background of the movie are magically morphing into different things, they're magical. So that's a whole different category. <clears throat> but let's go over these ones here. <clears throat> so you have Heath Ledger in um, The Dark Knight. You know, it's an alchemical movie. And Heath makes the pencil disappear. It's a magic trick. And this is a clue to the, the, the um, pencil slash pen is mightier than the sword. And this is repeating. We, later on, we see Jack Nicholson. He plays the Joker, and he jabs the pen in someone's neck, and he and he goes, "Oh, the the pen is mightier than the sword." This this clue, this this, you know, and Kubrick has the the zero G um, ballpoint pen is floating around, and then um, one of the companies NASA does business with develops a zero G ballpoint pen, and they spend a bunch of money doing it. And um, oh yeah, here they are. There's zero G pens. Magic thread. Um, so one of the one of the characters in um, Top Gun is Merlin. He's a magician. Kubrick was a magician. Uh, magic beans. Magic show. Uh, there's a magic show in Barry Lyndon. Little Brian gets to see the magic show, and they tell him about. Oh, Brian, uh, white contains all the colors of the rainbow. You know, so they're giving. Magic Mountain. This is the ski poster that's in the Overlook. 
and um, Magic Mountain is a ski lodge, it's a ski place, and of course it's an inactive volcano. So we have another another um, inactive volcano clue, just like Mount Hood. You know, so this is the impending doom, the the Jack in the Box, the Trojan Horse, the Snowball. You know, this is the impending. When this puzzle comes out, it's going to be like the inactive volcano when active. And you have Mount the Mount Olympus ship, Mount Erebus, another volcano, Magic Eight Ball. Magic Eight Ball is beautiful. So, it's billiards. It's a Magic Eight Ball, and in the movie, his his nickname. Because remember, we're always using nicknames. His nickname is Jungle Bunny. So we have the Dorian Harewood. So we already have a bunny category, which is a, a hare is a female bunny, and a wood, which is the wood category. And then he's a magic eight ball, so he's magic already. And then he's Jungle Bunny, so we're, we're, we're doubling the bunny clue. So this when I found this one and started really understanding what the what it, what the whole thing was I'm like wow maybe this maybe every one of these things has a magic thread and sure enough they do and like like if you go to pulp fiction you know the scene where he gets the, the huge needle and rams it into her heart he asks her for the magic black magic you know, this is this is even better the black magic marker so that is a clue to eugenics that you know he's got the one-eyed needle he's ran you know the the girl had a snowball so it, it's i mean when kubrick gushes about pulp fiction there's a reason he's gushing about pulp fiction because stuff like this the black magic marker okay so it's a eugenics clue well that's pretty good and um we have the um the snowball because it's you know she does the cocaine and then she does the heroin and overdoses. I can't spell today. So that's the nickname of that is a snowball. So it's snowball. And it's, it's so this is, and once again, the clue, the snowball itself is a doublet because this means it's no ball and it's snowballing. So. So that's how it works. We have all these bizarre categories of threads that you know seem they don't seem like they're 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 tied together, but you're like, oh well let's let's look at slices for a second. So we got slices of pie from Twin Peaks, slice of pie. We got a slice of the AE map. We got a crescent crater on the moon. So you have a crescent slice of the moon, crescent slice of the earth. Crescent slice from um, Alan Shepard's six iron shot. You got a slice from Billie Jean King and the Corona Flushing Queens Tennis Stadium. The Arthur Ashe Billie Jean King Tennis Stadium and Corona Flushing Queens. So all these slices and games. So you have slices, diced chopped he chopped his family up with an axe chopper the we have so you have the bell chopper bell um bell jet ranger chopper you have the captain america chopper you got zed's chopper zed's dead um you got the yankee clipper Get the easy rider you know I mean it, it just goes on and on each one of these categories you fill them all out and when you get them all done you're like this thing whole thing is woven together like like a uh, you know a rug and that's how it goes so the card game let's let's do a few of the card games so you got <clears throat> Jack Nicholson Jamie Lee Curtis Queen Queen of Screams Marie Windsor Queen of the Bees. You got John Wayne, King of the Westerns. You've got the Joker in Full Metal Jacket. 
combat correspondent, which is a thread, you know, here's another thread. So the reason this puzzle doesn't get solved is because a picture is worth a thousand words. So one picture, you can ha you can show 50 of these categories in one picture easily. And it wouldn't make sense to anyone until you actually may find these bizarre cat bizarro categories that he's giving you. And um, you really, like I said before, it's a language. So you can't just kind of like gloss over these and go, oh, that's neat. You have to learn each one of these categories because it's a language. And then when you go to watch someone else's movie, you know, you find your see you next Wednesday thread in some other movie. Say you jump into the Blues Brothers movie and you're like, well, what would the vehicles be in the Blues Brothers? Well, you get the Blues Mobile. It's magic. It flies. Um, in, in Before they edited the movie The Blues Brothers Down, the car, there was a lot more of the movie that was talking about how the car, the car had a whole backstory. The car was magic in the Blues Brothers movie. And you have Jake and Elwood. Jake is Jack. So you've got Jack. You've got John um, Belushi. So he's, he's named Jack in the movie, and his name's John. So it's a doublet. And this is how it's done. And... I hope I hope I've at least you know made an attempt at showing how this thing works. Um, it's a very difficult puzzle to explain to people, and when you finally do understand the language, and you go to explain it to someone else, you're going to have the same difficulties I am, or maybe you won't. Maybe you'll you know you'll figure out it you know a, a better way of explaining it, but. And that's it, guys. Have a good night. And Patty, I hope you watched this, and I hope you garnered some information out of it. And uh, my best advice is if you want to understand this puzzle, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to know Flat Earth. You're going to have to know all about Flat Earth. You're going to have to know about the gyro, and you're going to have to know about Coriolis, and you're going to have to know about the curvature issues, and you're going to have to know about all the little things about Flat Earth. And you're going to have to have at least seen Kubrick's movies once uh, and really you really need to have probably have seen Kubrick's each movie at least two to three times and taken notes with it to really understand this and that's it guys it uh, like I said I hope I hope I did a, a better job of explaining this than before and carpe diem guys have a great night